say a Fitbit Ace 3. My apprentice has been having some seizures, more than one at this point. Um, so we're going to try and get to the bottom of things and uh, we reckon the Fitbit might help. Um, and there is reportedly Fitbit compatible amps, uh, apps that will give you an alert if they're having a seizure or if it thinks one might be impending. Um, so I'm not sure if they're compatible with this particular model of Fitbit, but the thing is we need one that she will actually wear. Um, so this is the colour she chose. And uh, yeah, we'll have a bit of a muck around with this. I can probably write myself an app to do what I need to do anyway, but at least if she has another seizure, then we should be able to have some idea of when exactly it happened and what was involved. And crucially, this one is swim proof. With my apprentice and her obsession with water, that's definitely worthwhile. So anyway, we'll get this out, get it charged up and muck around with it. But that will be a probably a video for another day once we actually get familiar with them. I've never played with Fitbits before, so I've got to do some learning. Anyway, but yeah, surely leave a comment if this sort of topic is interesting because then I will do a bit of a, a video about it. Anyway, let's uh, move on and see what else shows up. Actually, I just thought I'd actually take a moment to open this and uh, show you guys what you get in a Fitbit um, box. Uh, partly because uh, you guys seem to actually respond a bit more to the unboxing side of these things. So, uh, And there is a bit of that ASMR thing going on that people have mentioned my videos are a little bit like. So we'll sort of roll with that. So we get our Fitbit itself and we get... What do we get in here? We get a charging lead, which I'm gonna, oh, it's a specialty charging lead. Okay, and a manual. And uh, grab the primary mobile device a child would use, well, we don't. Get the Fitbit app, create an account. Okay, so I'll have to pair this with a phone and everything. And I could have opened that at the bottom where the arrow was. Anyway, let's um, we'll get this all unwrapped and uh, we'll go present it to my apprentice. We'll have to give this a charge. But let's see how we go. I don't even know how to turn this thing on. Um, I guess we'll figure it out. There's our little sensor on the bottom, or there's actually, it looks like there's an array of sensors, a couple of infrared things. There's some skin conductivity contacts, and that could almost be ultrasound behind there or something. And there's an LED here, which I think is going to be important for these two sensors here. I think that's going to provide the light source. So um, oh, it's, it's fired up. What did I do to turn it on? What did this turn on when I pulled this off? I don't know what I did, but it's detected that it's turned on. So download or update the Fitbit app to set up. Okay, well, we'll work on that. But anyway, that's the unboxing. That's what you get with the Fitbit. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, just a quick little update on this thingy. The sensor on the back here that looks like a heart rate sensor why well, there is a heart rate sensor and isn't using it or it's used for tracking motion which there's no way to check. This is an expensive pedometer. We really need a couple of models up to get the heart rate tracking. On top of that the Windows 10 app that interfaces with it is useless. Three hours to sync. So they're really pushing you to go on the mobile side of things. But I think this is finally charged up to 100%. So yeah, a little bit irritated, although my apprentice has managed to rack up 749 steps since we got it. So um, yeah, not really what I'd hoped for. If you're going to do tracking the way we planned with this, probably get a, a different model. Make sure it actually has heart rate tracking. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. And we have a couple of things arrive. A couple of micro B leads. However, these aren't going to be used for the next delivery that has arrived. Is this thing. This is an S21 Ultra 5G. Now, I had my heart set on a Snapdragon CPU version. But because we live in Aussie land, Exynos is about the only one we can practically get without going through a lot of shady routes. I suspect that's got something to do with Australia's um, backdoor law, I call it. It's a law where... Any electronic device you sell in Australia has to have a backdoor the government can access. So, um, you know, we may as well be in China. Anyway, I did want the 512 gig version, but uh, practically that was just going to get to be too hard to find. So, brand new S21 
Ultra. And I haven't taken any of the stuff off. It's got the four cameras on the back as well as the laser range finder. And it's got a 40 megapixel front camera. They don't come with a charger. They just come with a, uh, a USB-C to C lead. But that's okay. We have a couple of S20s in the house. Um, and a Note 10 Plus, I think. So we have the charger already for that. There's a, oh, there's a piece of paper in there, a quick start. I'm pretty sure we know how to use a USB-C to C lead. And there's nothing fancy about that. But it does feel kind of solid. Um, I am going to get a wireless charger. This guy apparently supports wireless power sharing. So the other S20s we've got, we can share with that. Um, I'm going to power this up later on. Not just yet. But it's a heavy phone. I couldn't get the Phantom Black or... I could have ordered direct from Samsung. Um, I ended up purchasing this locally. Uh, but Samsung was going to take four to six weeks to do any of the custom colors. And to be honest, I'm putting a case on this thing anyway that's going to be about the thickness of this bezel. I'm going to do probably in clear acrylic or something. The color won't matter all that much, to be honest. It doesn't affect its function. So silver's fine with me. And it's, uh, yeah, people might think it's an iPhone at a distance. I don't know. Not that I'd be caught dead with one. They just don't fit my ethos. Um, but yeah, we'll find out how all the stuff goes into this. Crucially, it's waterproof. Um, the Exynos apparently has problems with overheating, but we'll see over time what that's like. But for now, I've got the long and arduous process of setting up another phone. My good old uh, Sony Xperia XZ Premium in the custom case that I made for it has done probably more than a tour of duty. It's had laser through the bloody speaker grill and it's been dropped many times. It's been wet lots of times, but the charging port has finally started to give up the ghost. So, um, yeah, this one's going to get retired. I'll probably still do a bit of filming on it if I can get Tinkerman Mick over on his channel to look at the charging socket for me. Um, but other than that, this one's getting retired and because Sony quietly pulled out of Australian market in phones based on the very same law that I was talking about before. They didn't want to compromise their security. So these are pretty much impossible to get in Australia now. So let's see what else shows up. There's going to be some other items, probably not as big ticket as this. Um, and this is pretty well the last of the big ticket items I'm going to be able to get on this channel for, for a little while. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens in the very near future. All right, we're still in the field for this next lot of deliveries. Some five and a half 2.5 mil plugs and five and a half 2.1, 10 of each. They're expensive little critters sometimes. We have ourselves a four port USB hub to go in my file server. And uh, we've got ourselves a wireless charging thing. This is probably the first time I've decided to go wireless charging, probably because it's the first phone I've got that actually handles it. So um, we'll see how that goes. And also, <laughs> I took the sticky stuff off it off screen. I did the peel. I kept that to myself. 2,000 bucks for the privilege to peel some plastic. I wanted to enjoy it alone. All right, let's see what else we get. Now we've had some more deliveries arrive. One of them is an Otterbox Defender for an S21 Ultra because the new S21 Ultra, actually I've done myself a bit of an injury with the nerves in my arms because my elbow. I spent so much time trying to hold onto it so tightly and it was sliding out of my hands even though I did that. The thing was try, like trying to hold onto a block of wet soap. Um, I don't know why they don't just make phones. Like If everybody is doing this with their phones, why don't they just make them within these dimensions and put like a, a rubber coating on them anyway? Um, uh, I'm midway through designing a case myself for this, but this curved screen ball crap um, is actually a pain to deal with. So I've gone with an OtterBox for now. I was going to get a silicon cover with an S Pen. I don't know how much I'm going to use an S Pen. Anyway, um, we'll see how much I do with Samsung DeX as to whether an S Pen will be useful. Anyway, um, enough about that. Um, another thing that has arrived, a Bunnings building block warehouse. This is like a Lego clone. Me and my apprentice might get stuck into this. My apprentice specifically requested this one. I know it's a bit of a marketing gimmick, but uh, 
I think we might do a, like some sort of time lapse video with that. Um, give us a, a comment if you reckon we ought to do like some sort of video about my apprentice building this one. Um, people do seem to like the apprentice videos. Now, um, the 6x6 ambulance needs some work, so we've got ourselves um, a smoke alarm. I should probably point out, I'm not sponsored by any of these people. This is just the stuff that I buy um, or that gets donated to me. Um, this is a photoelectric smoke alarm, but it also is a monoxide sensor as well. We've got one of these in the kitchen because we do gas cooking in the kitchen. I'll stick this in the ambulance because, you know, Monoxide actually might be handy if we're like for some reason if we're driving and the back end gets uninhabitable or something or if we happen to be using a gas flame, which is unlikely. Anyway, monoxide and uh, smoke are two very risky things in a space like that. So we'll put that in the ambulance. And that's got a, a 10 year battery in it as well, uh, a permanently fitted battery. Now we've got ourselves a fire blanket for similar reasons. It's just a fiberglass blanket. We'll stick that up near the rear exit so that we have an alternative means of firefighting. Um, now, I have smoke alarms, uh, sm oh, fire extinguishers in the house um, and uh, in the vehicles. They are all a little bit old, like five or six years. So I'm going to replace a few of them and we're going to use the old ones to train both my apprentice and my senior financial manager how to actually use a fire extinguisher. So many people have these things, but not very many people actually get to discharge one in anger. So we'll probably light up a fire at some point and actually demonstrate how to use a dry cam extinguisher. And these, I would have preferred a CO2 extinguisher actually, but in an enclosed space, these are far less likely to suffocate you. However, the caveat is that the powder in this stuff is highly corrosive, so you don't spray it on anything you love. Um, but considering there's not too much computer wires in the ambulance and it's mostly fiberglass, a dry cam is going to be pretty good. Um, so I actually happen to have had a bulk purchase of these and I have three of the things um, in a big stack. Oh, and you guys would remember my desk cleanup video. Well, a week on, it's back to the same state. So I've got another desk cleanup happening very soon. So uh, that's pretty well it for today, but there's probably going to be more stuff. There's been a few orders go through. Um, we'll see how much of it arrives before the end of the month. Some of it's got to come from overseas, so it might edge into next month's. But uh, next month is probably going to be kind of boring like the previous month. But yeah, stuff always shows up. We'll see what we get. Anyway, um, let's see what the next delivery is. It's the start of the month and the deliveries have arrived. I don't happen to have a pocket knife on me to open this, which is unusual if any of you guys know me, do not have a pocket knife on me. Um, this is a wireless keyboard and mouse, the Sonic B brand that the local supermarket sells. Um, we've got through lots of these um, in the past. In fact, my apprentice is so hard on keyboards and mice, we buy the cheapest ones possible. <laughs> but this will run my server um, a little bit better than the wired keyboard that's there presently. Um, and they work relatively well and they come with batteries and the receiver is in the back of the mouse. Right there. Cool. These will be good. Um, it's a low profile keyboard, not the greatest and not the worst either. So, um, But it will work in... It's a bit warped out of the box. Oh, that is going to annoy the crap out of me. I'm glad this is not going to be used on a hard surface. Why is that? I think it. I think the whole body of it is just kind of a little twisted. That's better. I gave it a twist, and it's a bit better. <laughs> Technology these days just bend it a bit, a bit like it used to be. All right, we'll see what else shows up. I'm doing this month's on the GoPro and the three-way tripod because my trusty Sony XZ Premium or Sony Xperia XZ Premium is um, not, it's pretty well had the gong. The charging port is knackered and there's a few other things that would be wrong with it. Um, and normally I would go with Sony phones, but Sony pulled out of the Australian market um, around about the same time that the Australian government said that if anybody sells electronic hardware in Australia, it has to have a back door that the government can access. 
I think Sony didn't want to compromise their security and their morals and just quietly pulled out of Australia. So you can't get Sony phones. So I might be looking at an S21 Ultra. I'd love to get the 512 gig version, but they're very hard to find. Um, so, and I'd love to get a Snapdragon version. But uh, again, the Snapdragon ones, it's a little bit harder, I think, to leave the back door open in them. So the Sony Exynos ones are what they sell in Australia. So I could probably import an international version, but with my other phone dying, I might be forced to take what's local. So we'll see what shows up. Anyway, we're going to put some batteries in and put this into service and move on to the rest of the donations and deliveries. All right, we have some more deliveries arrived and uh, we're back at base. Um, and it's, I am as tired as hell, so you're just gonna have to deal with me being as tired as hell. So let's see what our first delivery is. Right. My neighbor's come past. I think he's a bit intimidated by the hardware on the front lawn. It does that, it does that every time I'm parked in the front lawn. Uh, now he lives probably about 100 meters up from me, he doesn't really need to do that. Ah, tempered glass protectors for the S21 Ultra. All right, so I bought a $50 Panzer glass one, which the thing's over here, um, for the S21 that's filming this, and the ultrasonic fingerprint reader doesn't work through it. It actually creates a gap. So it will fit the S20 that my wife's using, so she might get that. And I might use one of these guys and see but these guys were like eight dollars each <laughs> and that one was like 50 bucks but it come from a telstra store so I'm dubious about that and these um pretty much have got all the same kind of kit in them and they come in a nice little protective glass case they've got the clean wipes pretty much standard drill so let's see how that works let's see what else we have um, a slightly bigger box has arrived Listed as a one kilo box, I think that's a volumetric weight because it's a very light box. Um, now, I did leave a note on my door to the uh, delivery people going, hey, we're away for a couple of days, um, can you leave it in my Land Rover? And most of them actually did. I'm quite surprised that the delivery guys actually got instructions and actually went just an extra two steps to hide them properly for me. So. We just paid a whole package to deliver some air. Or maybe not. Um, oh yes, an SSD. So I'm gonna do, I hate these things, they piss me off, so. Do that. This is supposed to be the biodegradable plastic too. These poly cells. Reduce, reuse, recycle, well, no, they're getting melted down. All right, this is an MP600. Um, I think this is, yeah, the one terabyte one. This is the same thing I've already got in mine, except this might be NVMe. I might have X570 in the other one. I'm not as familiar with these to know the difference, but I'm pretty sure this is the same thing. Um, we'll find out when we plug it into my motherboard whether it works or not. So that is gonna be my working drive. I've already got one of these in here um, that's doing OS and working. This guy is gonna go in the second slot as my working drive so that my OS has a drive all to itself um, that is not in competition with everything. All right, we have another big parcel, but I'm gonna to have to change camera angles. All right, my neighbor's coming back again. <laughs> uh, all right. Now, this is a big box. Let's see what's in this one. All right, for a start, I need to take an invoice off the top. Let's see what we get. That invoice pretty well tells me what I need to know just from the name of it. So I think I know what this is going to be. Which means I need to be a little careful with the knife here. So. I need to lift up and cut gently along that tape. Okay. Ha! And the telltale of an expert. I strapped a little bit of uh, cardboard along here so I don't compromise the contents of the parcel. I'll put the knife away now because I'm tired and tired plus knife usually means blood. 
so we have another 12 24 hour or 12 units of 24 hour hunger buster rat pack oh and they sent me a kfc kit as a bonus complimentary gift because they're thanks for all the orders i keep doing from them so this is where i get, when when suppliers do this this is when i give them a plug um because i wasn't expecting that they i get these from aussie storm shop you can find them online um and uh yeah they're actually probably some of the best the best priced place to get these packs and we use them a lot um and uh we've got a bit of everything and the chicken and veg is actually quite nice um the butter chicken not so much but um it's a bit spicy for my liking my wife loves the chili con carne my apprentice loves the spag bowl we've got a couple of everything in here so we should be good for a while this will restock the ambo we recently got stuck for a couple of days between floods in victoria um and we used up our, our ration pack so uh nice to have a restock so um Anyway, that's all there is for the moment, but uh, I'm sure there's going to be more this month. We'll see what happens. All right, while we're waiting for our next delivery, I'm going to go back to the deliveries we got earlier. There are two screen protectors here. Now, sad to say, I'm not going to recommend you spend money on this one. Uh, namely because this one was about 15 bucks. This one I got for like 11 here's the difference see this little thing here protection comes first that doesn't seem to have anything to do with it it says in display fingerprint sensor incompatible with screen protector now the at a glance you might see the latter half of the word compatible i'm going to switch lenses now you can probably read that from here it says incompatible. What I did when I purchased this is I went, oh yeah, fingerprint sensor. It's made reference to that. Oh yeah, it's it's compatible. I saw that from a distance. So I just wasted 50 bucks. So I've ripped that protector off because not only does it not work with a screen protector, it actually creates a bit of an air gap. It adheres around the edge, but it doesn't make physical contact with the screen. Now, I'm sure there's probably some reasons for that, but it feels horrible to use. And actually, even with the touch sensitivity increased, it's actually kind of difficult. Um, and the, what it does also mean is it allows dust ingress through the hole around the, the selfie camera. And then it dust gets in behind the display. The what? So, and before you say I put it on wrong, that's entirely possible. But I've done a lot of screen protectors. When you do the stuff that I do, you bust screen protectors a lot. I've also dealt with Tinkerman Mick who has done many thousands of them, having run a business doing that in the past, um, doing phone repairs. Um, and I have had plenty of notes and actually seen how he puts them on. And so I'm quite confident I'm putting it on correctly. This guy here, um, I actually got a couple of them. I cocked the first one up. Um, I'll admit that. There is a little adhesive dot on here that actually sticks over the, uh, the fingerprint sensor because it's an ultrasonic one. And I think it's um, an acoustic gel or an acoustic adhesive, a bit like what they use when they're doing an ultrasound. Um, and it actually works. The first one, though, I didn't get it adhered properly. I shifted at the last second and it messed up that adhesive pad. So I had to peel it off and clean it all off with alcohol swab and start again. Um, and, of course, that sticky pad was messed up. It didn't ever quite read my fingerprint properly. And it, the phone kept going, hey, your fingerprint sensor's dirty. I can't use it. So expecting to have messed up that one i had a second one the second one's not perfect but it's well enough on there that it can read my fingerprint just with a little bit of additional pressure um, increasing the fingerprint sensor or increasing the screen sensitivity with this protector on actually meant it didn't read the fingerprint reader so i had to turn that off but it feels very nice it doesn't create an air gap it's not all spongy on the top um, and it's actually working really nicely. It is a little curved, but it doesn't quite cover as much of the screen as Panzer Glass does. So if you're worried about the edge, that'd be the way to go. Most of the time when I have screen problems, it's in the middle of the surface area. So I'm going to recommend these guys. I have reached out to Panzer Glass on Facebook via message. Haven't got a response from them yet, but I've basically just said, here's my feedback. I think I got duped. Yes, it is written on the box and it's clearly 
I understand it clearly says incompatible, but it's written in a slightly deceptive way so that at a glance you might think it actually is compatible. And it's a bit like, and, and in, in my message I've also brought up the message that it, um, it, it looks a bit like, you know, other deceptive business practices, like when you get curvy blocks of soap so that they make the box bigger but give you less soap. Or, um, you know, when they keep decreasing the size of muesli bars but keep the pack at the same size, you know. It's all that sort of deceptive business practices. We're going to save a few bucks, but for something that cost 50 bloody dollars, this $11, I think this is still probably a slight um, overpriced or marked up price because I think it probably cost them maybe a dollar to make. Curved glass I know is a little more expensive, but these days I'm pretty sure if stuff's coming out of China, well it is, yes, coming out of China. <laughs> and um, okay, this is designed in Australia, but made in China. Where is this one? I'll bet you this is made in China too. Yep. Okay, so possibly in the same manufacturing plant or very similar, but a magnitude of order of five times in the price. Come on, Optus, you, you, you're marking us up out of the mar out of the market here. And that, I got that from an Optus shop. So, anyway, let's move on. That's my rant. Um, I'm padding this out while I'm waiting for more stuff to show up. All right. So another addendum to the donations and deliveries. Those two new leads I bought. My apprentice has managed to damage one of them already. Um, not only was it severely bent, she's also flattened out the hooks on it. I've got to get some magnetic leads for this kid. All right, let's move on. All right, so we're back in the field for these deliveries. And if I sound a little underwhelmed, it's because I've been awake all night. My beloved little apprentice had yet another seizure. This is totaling four now. And we've been awake all night because she's been in hospital all night. Um, I'm working on about two, maybe three hours sleep. Anyway first item delivered we have an LED clock um, but this has got a wireless QI charger on the top um, this one does support fast charging so my genuine Samsung charger that also does 9 volt fast charging will work with that um, my little spot tracker or spot trace unit um, that I'm using to track an asset is going flat so we need some decent long life batteries all right, so I'm yet to get a proper tripod for the uh, the S21 Ultra, so we're using the LED clock. Well, let's see if we can get this open. And see what's in this one. This little Ozpost parcel. I think I know what this might be. Let's have a look here. This is probably going to be GoPro bits, I think. Let's have a look. It says Wasabi Power. I'm pretty sure that was the brand of things Aha. let's tip bits out so we've got three batteries in there and we've got a little three-way charger and we've even got a cable there we go so that's a three-way um, battery charger for GoPro batteries and three spare batteries awesome source okay let's see what else shows up all right so had a bit of time to have some rest. I'm obviously not in the field anymore, and the apprentice is home. But well, that's after something like four seizures in a month, so she's going to get medicated. It's been a very emotional um, few days, so bear with me. But a bit of a pick me up for the moment. Something's arrived. Now, yeah. here we go. This thing here. Um, let me have a look. This, I'm pretty sure, is yet another purchase from Reboot IT. Oh wait, that's a pretty um, bad way to use a knife. I might cut myself. So, I have to take a time to think a little bit more slowly when I'm tired because I can make potentially dangerous or deadly mistakes. Yep, this is definitely what I expected. It's all this box for a power brick. At least that's what I'm going to say. The rest of it is packing and a laptop for padding. Well, they said this was B grade. 
and they weren't wrong there's a few sticky marks on it this is a Dell hardened laptop um, it's like military spec one and now uh, it's gonna get an SSD straight out of the um, out of the box I'm not even gonna bother firing it up it's an old core i5 but it certainly beats my old Asus EPC which I'll grab you and show you that one um, for comparison now this little kit this has done a couple of laps around the globe and uh, it's my little EPC 1015H laptop. I was hoping this guy would fit in this case but I think I probably won't need a case for this one and it's got a big rubber handle on it which is flexy, that's interesting, I thought that was solid. Um, anyway, that EPC owes me nothing, it's done a lot of work um, over the years. Let's get the sharp thing out of the way. This one will probably give it a bit of um, a bit of a spray and wipe clean up very soon. Nice big latch on it. I like this one. Yeah, and that handle I thought was going to be solid. Touchscreen. Keyboard's not the greatest, but it's not the worst either. Let's see if it fires up out of the box. I've got a camera on the top, and I think there's a little slidey bit we can move over. It's mechanically operated, not electronically, which is nice. These might actually be little infrared lights. They've put Windows 10 on it, which is nice. Um, let's check the part number while it's firing up. Uh, yeah. This is... Apparently it had Windows Pro on it. Oh, I've forgotten what model number this is. Let's have a look here. It's got a room for a docking station and multiple antenna connections on the bottom too. Um, this is... Wow, really hard to see. Give me a moment. Alright, let's see how this Galaxy uh, S21 Ultra's macro works. Well, it's a Dell Latitude 14 rugged model 5404. Um, and from according to my order list, which I've got on the screen, this is a, an i5-4310U uh, with 2 gigahertz chip and 8 gig of RAM. A 500 gig mechanical drive in it um, that will probably go to a one terabyte SSD very shortly because I've got one on the shelf um, not too bad let's flip it over and have another look at the internals all right I thought this guy had some troubles and I had to force shut it down but it turns out they've whacked a brand new copy of Windows 10 on there so I'm not going to bother going through the whole setup I'm going to whack the SSD in this and then see if I can get the NOS onto that. But uh, that will be probably a video for another time. This is uh, just donations and deliveries. So I'm going to play with this and uh, wait on more deliveries or and or donations. Actually, I thought I should just take a little bit more time to illustrate that these have little closable doors for all the ports and stuff. So we've got USB 3 micro USB 3 port HDMI micro SD and headphone socket Now we have VGA but crucially we have a serial port that is exceptionally handy for the stuff I do that's going to be handy a standard USB 2 port I think with the recess in here I could probably put a mouse receiver in there there's a LAN port on it um, I'm not sure what I've got around this side this is hard drive in there Batteries behind its own door. This has got a standard size SD holder, another USB 3 port, a USB 2 port, um, and the battery is by, yeah, batteries behind a door around this side. Um, battery is in that door there. So it'll make changing hard drive nice and easy. I think it should just pull straight out. Um, let's have a look. Pull it to the edge here, grab the little helper tab. Oh, I think I've got to undo a couple of screws underneath. I think the battery's screwed in too. Still, um, nice bit of gear. And you can see if the lights are working while it's um, <laughs> while you've got it uh, shut. It's good. All right, let's move on. Uh, some more deliveries have arrived. A flexible funnel and an oil pan. These things are nifty. Although my last one's dissolving after I put a bit of brake fluid in it. But anyway... There should be more stuff to arrive, and some interesting stuff fairly soon. Alright, another delivery has arrived. This is another Seagate expansion drive, which we need a slightly bigger field of view for. Um, this is an 8TB one, 
It's basically a bulk standard SATA drive in a box with a USB adapter on it, which is exactly what I want. And I'm going to pull it apart, but you'll see that in a video probably before you see this video. So you'll probably already know if you're a subscriber uh, what happened to this. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. I'm sure you've all seen an external drive before. All right, some more stuff has arrived. Now, before I show this next one, I'm going to explain some of the phenomenon that happens around here. Stuff occasionally just randomly shows up in boxes on my doorstep. Um, it's got especially worse since I've started this uh, YouTube channel and people have started thinking, oh, he likes these things for donations. Consequently, I do get random boxes just show up uh, in the driveway and in the doorstep at random times of the night with people who just want to get rid of electronic junk. Uh, and they go, hey, he might like that. Um, so yeah, a lot of the time I end up throwing away a lot of it or I take it to um, the e-waste down at the local refuse station. Um, but today, in amongst, in amongst throwing some stuff out, I noticed a funny plug pack hanging out of things. I noticed this funny plug pack. And this uh, was made, it's a NICAD charger made in Germany. And I thought, that's interesting. It was attached to this thing which will move our camera angle around a bit. <laughs> this is an animal chip, a microchip reader. Um, and it, it only fires up when I'm actually got it plugged in. And I think this actually should supposedly have NICADs in it. So it probably doesn't work all that well. Interestingly enough, the power is a, a DB9 serial plug for the power connector. Um, and it is like 14.4 volts or something. So, that's interesting. There might be battery cells in here that need to be replaced. It does fire up. I used an international um, adapter to plug that up, or to plug that into, but yeah, it does fire up. Um, I don't know what frequency this is, though. That's the only issue. I have got um, some 138 kilohertz tags kicking around, which I think are the same frequency as animal tags, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. So I might order some little glass tags at some point if I think I can get this working. But yeah, this is made in Germany by um, AEG and Telefunken Electric. So um, yeah, Telefunken make chip readers. Anyway, there's some other stuff that's probably less interesting. Let's have a look at that. All right, so much less interesting is some batteries. We've all seen them before. Um, we've got yet another keyboard and mouse because uh, the project you guys probably will have seen at this point uh, was me dismantling the last one um, to make a remote com a remote control for Cody and uh, I kind of ripped some tracks off the board uh, however the mouse attached to this is still handy I'll use that not a total waste but uh, this one um, will be related to the next stuff that I've had show up um, which is a big pile of bits and pieces here now, these are some clamshell remote control cases. I've got two different sizes of these. So uh, this time I'm gonna do it properly. And uh, we've got AAA battery holder, which will be useful. And a bunch of momentary push buttons that might be nice. And these are kind of like glorified tactile switches, but perfect for what we want to use them for. That will be good. Um, the hope is I can finish part two of that project now with all these bits. Um, and I'm going to try and find an edge connector so that I can actually plug this card in. I'll explain that before I go too much further on. The one, rather than solder on and rip the contacts off and have to hot glue it, I'm hoping to get an edge connector so I can just slot this whole card into the connector. And I might use an old PCI slot to do it depending on the pin pitch. But we'll see what happens. In any case, there's bound to be more stuff showing up, so um, we'll go have a poke around and see what that is. All right, let's see what's in this yellow package. Let's see what looks like here. Oh, okay, I didn't really need a knife for that one. Well, I might still... When you order bits and pieces from a bunch of different suppliers, this is what you get, little packages. Wow, really? <laughs> okay, these are a bit smaller than I thought. Actually, no, these are a bit bigger. These aren't cameras. These are freaking microphones. Wow, golf ball microphones for, the, for camera systems. What on God's green earth is in these things? Give me a second while I open one to have a look. All right, I think I've managed to pop one of these guys open. 
have a look at what's in here. Um, they take power, so I assume there's an amplifier of some kind in there. Ah, I see. That goes that way. So it's just an ordinary condenser mic with a blob of hot glue. And then an amplifier circuit with gain control. That is nice to have. A bit of hot glue to hold the wire as well. It's certainly cheap, but I think I paid about four Aussie dollary dues for these, so I can't complain too much. Certainly a little bit more could be done to make them waterproof, but I guess that will give me audio on my cameras, which the coppers have been asking me to do for a couple of years now. So, all right, we'll do that. All right, let's uh, see what else shows up. All right, some more deliveries have arrived. A couple of things this time. I usually like to open the smallest boxes first. So let's see what's going on here. Let's see what we have. I'm gonna open these up this way to save having to redact the labels on stuff because human beings, what they are, generally aren't great. It generally isn't great to advertise to the average human beings what your address is. Aha. Uh -huh. What else? Anything else in here? Yep, there's one more. Okay, this would be GoPro bits with some 3M sticky pads and some helmet mounts, some flat ones and some curved ones. Awesome. So these will be good. Um, I'm not sure if these are genuine or not, but I'm pretty sure they will work well enough. Um, one of these might be good enough to make a lightweight camera jig for the kite. My apprentice is just home and is hungry too. That's the yelling you can probably hear in the background. So I'll probably go tend to her. Let's check this other package in the meantime though. All right, well it's first thing in the morning and another delivery has arrived. And it's apparently a mini camera of some kind. Um, this would be something I ordered to experiment with a little while ago. Um, I'm pretty sure this is, should be the pinhole camera. It is, well it's a, <laughs> a Phillips head screw lens camera. It's designed to uh, obviously look like a Phillips head screw with a uh, pinhole camera behind it. But crucially, this one is uh, AHD. Well, I have to yawn behind the camera here because I'm just waking up. Apparently this one's got a microphone in it too. Um, <laughs> no idea where it is. But yeah, apparently it's a 1080p AHD camera. Um, this will probably go on my DVR system. Um, it'll be interesting. Um, think about using this as a front door camera, as in poking it through my front door or the um, meter box, if I can do so safely without getting too close to the mains. <coughs> but yeah, interesting stuff. Oh, there's a <laughs> there's a manual in here that actually shows it. There we go. That actually shows the second board. Let's have a look here. So. Um, Okay, so apparently there is a microphone up the rear of the board in here. I don't know if it's included or not, but I guess we'll find out. Ah, oh, that, that might be it hanging out through the side here. That could be it right there. Anyway, this will be interesting. Might end up being a mailbox camera so I can see if I've got mail. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I've got two spare, two spare channels on my 16-channel system to... To play with so that might be an interesting experiment <coughs> but anyway um we'll see what else shows up all right well, we're in the field again and i have some more deliveries or rather purchases at this point a bluetooth adapter for this thingy in the background and because i have lots of cameras and the coppers keep taking away memory sticks i've decided to buy a bulk lot of them so that should keep me in memory sticks for a little while. Probably about a week. We'll see how we go. Anyway, let's move on and see what else shows up. All right, we've had some more deliveries arrive. And uh, amongst the deliveries, mystery lolly bags. I love these things. Childhood memory. We had some mail show up, which, by the way, <laughs> this is what it costs to get a lift across town in an ambulance. And we have three of these. So, yeah. <laughs> interesting that's for my apprentice <coughs> she's okay by the way but uh, further investigation is required here we have this little thing here uh, let's see what's in this we want a sheep's foot blade to open this see how we go 
What have we got in here? Ah, this is my new handlebar mount for a GoPro. This will be good considering um, my last one got busted off the Argo, so this will be nice to have a decent handlebar mount. Comes complete with screw. This is actually significantly more robust than my old one, which actually came out of a really cheap kit. Um, so yeah, this will be nice. It's got a good hinge on it so we don't lose the halves. That'll be very good actually, and I think that was like $9 or something, so it's, uh, yeah, considerably more robust than the old one, and I think that top bit rotates by the feel of that too. So that might be nice. All right, let's see what else we've got. All right, this next delivery not only requires wide angle, but a change in camera view. Um, in fact, you know what? Give me a second to put a better camera angle here. All right, required some different mounting hardware. All right, now, this, I'm gonna tell you straight off, is actually what it says on the box. It's an alternator. Um, this is for my financial manager's um, vehicle, which is a Jeep. And, uh, through having to fix that vehicle, I've got a fairly decent dislike for modern Jeeps now. So let's see if this is a new alternator, like they say. Um, give me a second to get this out of the box. All right, this was a little tricky to figure out how to get this box open, and this, again, is a heavy alternator. Um, nothing like the 28 volt one that we put into the six-wheel drive ambulance. It was a good 30 kilograms. This one is significantly less than that, but it's still probably a good 10 kilos or so. All right. This was hard to find because all the... The one in the vehicle is actually deliberately mislabeled. If you look up the exact part number, it gives you one with a four-pin plug facing this way. Whereas this one has a two-pin plug facing that way. The terminal's the same. The belt configuration's the same but it's different. Now these things, um, the one that we've got, the only problem with it really is that the main bearing is worn out or gone dry and it's got very noisy. In any normal alternator, you could pretty well press that out and put another one in. But these being America, American and us being in Australia, that's really hard to do, getting the imperial size bearings that Denso put in these things. They're not metric. So yeah, I, I am a little frustrated at the combination of metric and imperial things in that vehicle and the fact that it's a left-hand drive converted to right-hand drive for Australia. So things like the bonnet hood release and stuff are all in the wrong position. Um, and this has actually got a bit of dodgy trimming on the housing here. It doesn't give the look of a well-refined casting. And it's a plastic rear section, not a metal like the old one. This has got a lot of looks of being a cheap alternator. Well, it kind of is. It was about 350 bucks or 330 bucks or something for a new alternator. So not too bad. Fairly smooth. But anyway, we'll see what else shows up soon enough. Um, I also want to refer to the strange mounting that is on this. I'm used to ones that mount into a round bracket and have an adjustment. This one doesn't. It requires on a belt. It requires a belt tensioner somewhere else. So, for me, this is modern and crazy. So, anyway, let's move on. All right, so I have located a test charging source, a tangled mess of cable from one of the previous ones, and a different type of cable that is sticking onto a mint tin out of here. I need to clean up my desk again. <laughs> because these, there is one problem with these magnetic cables is this kind of behavior. It's kind of annoying. Let's straighten this one up and we'll do a little quick test charge. All right, let's um, plug this one over into my charging deck, which is just off to the side of the camera here. And we have a blue light to indicate this power. This is not the one we've been supplied with. Let's piss off the silver one, get rid of these three packets because we assume, having received those, that they're going to work. Um, I need a pair of scissors because I'm really organized and didn't do this ahead of time. Let's open this here. They're all stuck together in a big blob. Okay, so let's see. I can probably insert um, that. Let's see if it will work with a lead that didn't come with it. Um, 
indeed it will it's compatible with the other leads awesome let's try the other model of lead pull that one out I've got magnets sticking to everything whose idea was it to get magnetic leads all right stop sticking to them let's try that as well so it will work with all the other magnetic leads i've got good now i can use usb-c and micro b on the same leads all right good stuff all right we've had another delivery arrive we'll see what this one is this one is a heavy one and it rattles a bit it might be one of the ones that didn't have tracking numbers and it's one of these funny slash resistant in fact i've been watching the lock picking lawyer and i reckon these bags are more slash resistant than some of the slash resistant bags ah yes these are bnc connectors so bnc male to male bnc female to female that will be handy i'm missing them um bnc to rca female and bnc to rca male awesome these are handy i've been needing to stock up on these for a long time so finally got some of those in all right let's uh go and see what else has showed up now we have received some donations here um, of some cooling fans um, particularly with molex adapters on them uh, because i had a particular need for these these are second hand obviously but the molex adapters are the bit that i was after um, and that will be pertinent to the power supply that i received earlier what else have we got here a couple more of these nothing crazy in terms of fans although that's a genuine thermal take um yeah we've got these guys these fans i use in other applications a lot but uh these will be handy all right i'm going to chop all those adapters off and put them into service right away but there is more that came with this now a change of angle was necessary we have received a monitor which is a benq GW2255, a little bit scuffed up and no stand. Um, this particular model does VGA and DVI and no HDMI and takes a standard IEC plug. Nifty. From the weight of it, it feels like a fluoro backlit LCD. There's also another monitor. This one is, I think, an AOC. This is an LED one and it's Super, super thin. Um, again, second hand, bit of a scuffing, but very thin as far as monitors are concerned. Um, has two HDMI inputs, power supply not included, and it's got a VGA. And uh, yeah, we'll figure this out. I'll, uh, I'll figure out what the power supply should be and I'll engineer something to do that. But yeah, nice little stand, very thin. This could end up replacing, which uh, apparently, my camera mount is wrong. So here we go. So continuing on after that little uh, hiccup and camera malfunction, yes, this monitor might end up replacing this one up here. We'll see what happens, but uh, it could be interesting. Anyway, let's move on. All right, I've had another delivery arrive and um, I'm in the field for this one. So we're gonna see what this is. A look we're on the bonnet of the 6x6 ambulance today ah, tempered glass this would be for my financial managers uh, s20 so we're doing well all right well we're back i've been away for four days and i've been yelling over the top of engine noise all that time so my throat's a little husky, but it's finally the end of the month. So we're going to cap that off for donations and deliveries. And I have loads of footage to back up here onto the main machine and some editing to put together for you guys. So if you're stuck with us this long, you're doing well. Um, I do tend to find that with these videos, the um, viewer retention is actually a little bit low, but that's fine. I'm not monetized, so I don't really care. Uh, anyway. I hope you had fun with all these deliveries and I've probably yacked on with a month's worth of little tidbits so um, I'm already getting stuff for 
the this month. So we're moving on to the next video already, but uh, I've got to get on, get this edited and published so you guys can see it. Anyway, have fun, and we'll see you in the next video.